Recently, my colleague Pat Ryan had a chance to talk to uh, Scott Kelly before he left for the launch site, and he asked him to compare the preparation required for this one-year mission to that which Kelly went through for his earlier six-month trip to the space station. You know, a lot of it's the same. I mean, the systems are the same. Um, you know, a lot of the, the operations we do on board the, the space station are very similar. So the training is very similar. Where it, where it uh, differs because it's twice as long as one, one element is with I'm flying with twice as many crew members. And I have a different Soyuz commander on the return Soyuz than I do on launch. So we have to do extra uh, training. Uh, being up there with more people, I have to do extra emergency training, so we cover the uh, emergency procedures with all of them. Uh, and being there twice as long, you know, there's twice as more science that will go on while I'm there. So I have, uh, in some ways, there's some more scientific, uh, you know, science payload training. Scott, you have launched from Baikonur once before. Uh, walk us through what happens to you as you're going to, on launch day, when you're going to get ready to fly again. Yeah, so launch day, uh, you know, from, from Kazakhstan, and, and in some ways it's similar to, uh, you know, launching from Florida and how the launch day is designed. One thing that is different, though, is we don't do the same type of sleep shift. So where we're going to be launching at, uh, you know, one forty in the morning Kazakh time, uh, we, don't, we don't shift our sleep to, uh, to, to uh, you know, take that into consideration. We kind of get up at the at the normal time, and then we'll do a, you know, kind of take a nap later in the day. You know, I think it's about 8 o'clock at night. We'll uh, have uh, a, a ceremonial uh, departure from the uh, Cosmonaut Hotel in Baikonur. There's a traditional uh, blessing by the Russian Orthodox priest that you see uh, on almost every launch from there. Uh, we get on a bus, and then it's a, probably about an hour-long bus ride to the building where we get suited up and do our uh, leak checks of our suit. Once we get in the suit and do our leak checks, we get to talk to our, our families one more time and some friends. And then we get on the bus uh, to go to the launch pad. And, you know, what's interesting about that is if you've, I've flown on the Soyuz once before, but if you've never flown on the Soyuz once before, the first time you're in the Soyuz on the launch pad is on launch day. So that's a, that's a much different experience. In this case, uh, your trip to the station is scheduled to last just a couple of hours as opposed to two or three days. Uh, is that going to be better for you, or would you like to have the extra time to get acclimated? Well, it's about six hours uh, from the time uh, we launched to, to docking. Um, I prefer, I ha obviously I haven't done it yet, but I, but I think I'll prefer the shorter trip uh, than the 48 hours for a number of reasons. I think, um, you know, even though you're sitting in the, you're in the suit longer and you're in the seat longer and that can be somewhat uncomfortable, I think, uh, you know, I prefer that to spending, you know, two days in the Soyuz with, with little to do. Um, but also the other advantage to it is it, it provides us with a couple extra days on the space station. And it gives us some extra margin on the back end if we have any kind of uh, problems with the Soyuz and we need to, uh, you know, be in orbit longer. We have, you know, some extra uh, consumables and ability to do that. So there are a lot of uh, there are a lot more pros and cons to doing this uh, flight day one rendezvous and docking. As you look uh, out a year, what do you think are going to be the highlights of your time on orbit this time? I think probably the you know the variety of, of people and crew members that that come and go. Um, you know, you look at you know I've I've had I've flown in space three times. First time was eight days. Second time was thirteen days, and a third time was one hundred and fifty nine days. And if I had to compare them to each other on on uh, you know how you know they're they're much different lengths of of time, but they're all individual experiences, and you you cherish those. Uh, in, in many ways, the same way, you know, just because my first flight was eight days and my last flight 159 days. And, you know, I had four months with, uh, you know, Katie and Paolo and my Russian colleagues up there. I don't really look at them being much different. Um, you know, they're, they're, the human experience is something that you, you really appreciate. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, that is, is going to be one of the highlights, but also working on something that's very, very challenging and, uh, you know, working hard at it with a great team, both in space and on the earth, and then being successful is the other thing I look forward to. 
one last question, Scott. By the time you get back to Houston, you'll have been gone from here for well more than a year. Uh, that's a lot of sacrifice to make. Tell me why you think the mission you're going to do is worth that. You know, I, th I think all these missions are worth it. You know, we fly, you know, a lot of people on the space station. We've been doing it for 15 years. There's a lot of sacrifices that go into flying a six-month flight or even, you know, a shorter duration flight. You know, there's, there's sacrifices of different levels. And if we're ever going to perform uh, space missions beyond low Earth orbit, all of these flights are important and, and everyone's contribution is important. And this, this one is just a, a little bit different in that it's, uh, it's longer. Scott, thanks for the talk. Uh, have a safe trip and uh, have a good time on orbit. My pleasure. Thank you.